Hello everyone and welcome to my place on the internet where I am your host Peter aka the Mutton Shop Guy where I talk about the niche genre of game manga and all of its biggest features. Man. So allow me to provide you with some form of escapism by talking about a particular manhwa that became quickly my all-time favorite manhwa in this category of gay komi or as Baro is known in here in the west known as Wongami or the bear me because if you translate it from Korean it's the bear me. That's pretty cool! <laughs> yes this manhwa is made by a person known as Bami on the site that you would read it on or currently known as Makumoon on Twitter and if you read this manhwa and then go check out his Twitter account you can definitely tell that he's um quickly increased his production quality on his art skills and um <laughs> well just take a quick look at some of the things he's made Yeah, now you guys can clearly see why this is one of my favorite Korean artists. Because, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm, my eyes are ejaculating. <clears throat> so first thing I want to do is break down the story and then break down my understandings and thoughts and opinions on that. So if you don't want any spoilers for this story, please skip to this time code here. That way you don't have to worry about all the stuff and details that I spill the beans on during the next segment. Enjoy! Our story begins with our first main character, the chief team leader named Mr. Jung, enters into the office and is greeted by his team. It's when our first side character, Deputy Chief Hyo Dong Seok, guys suck at names, asks if he heard the rumors of their new female employee. He quickly dispels their rumors when he introduces our second main character, Wung Kang, who attended the same university as Mr. Jong attended. As Jong and Wung work together, we see them interact with each other in very cute, adorable ways that two people who work together have in a sort of rom-com fashion, which I'm totally on board with, as long as it's not too cheesy. We see them attend lunch together, mostly because Wung insisted on sharing his home-cooked meal as Jung was willing to eat convenience store food. This is where we learn more about Wong and his caring nature by seeing this continue through other actions like wiping Jong's face with his napkin, lifting Jong up to see the street event during Christmas Eve, carrying Jong home and staying the night making hangover soup. I can't pronounce the name and I don't want to bring more shame on me by trying. I'm already bad at saying names. You guys already know that. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Nursing him back to health from a cold and sprained ankle, and helping him change a light bulb because he's too small even on a stool. <laughs> and then what happened? Okay, so I need to take a moment to focus on the B story within this manga as it feeds into the next part. So our funny side character here, Hio, starts out as a simple observer on the outside. It's when he tries to drink with Wong that he starts to grow an attraction to him upon revisiting in a dream. A what dream? So he goes online to figure out his feelings for Wong by consulting with a consultant at a coffee shop. As summed up, Hyo isn't sure what he's feeling and he isn't sure about his sexuality. So the consultant suggests the only thing that can make one sure about it. You guessed it. <coughs> the funniest part about this is when they're at the apartment and the neighbors are commenting on the noise level. Like, what the hell is going on in this room? I see a caller, so something wild is going on here. Someone tell me what's up with this. Whoa. What is this? As our two main characters continue to interact with each other, Hyo watches with envy, wishing that Wung would do the same with him. So one night, Hyo shows up at the bar while Jung is there. So he decided to feel out Jung's feelings about Wong, suspecting that he likes him just as much as he does. He learns about the times where Wong and Jung were sharing a bed, or the two times that they kissed, or even the slip from the owner about how they worry about each other. So Hyo asks if Wong wants to go to lunch together only for him to invite Jung along, and any attempts after that were all thwarted because of Jung. So he takes Jung aside to talk about Wong, asking if he has any interest in him because Wong certainly shows interest in Jung. 
Jung denies it, even though he acknowledges it in this panel right here. By the way, I just love this line where he's asking himself who he's talking to. It reminds me of me, because I talk to myself like this a lot. Okay, moving on. So Hio finally gets Wong to agree with having a meal together, and go to a rather expensive restaurant. It's then we see Jung following the pair from there when Wong wanted to stop by a motel. Yes, a motel, because those things still exist. Which Hio became flustered, thinking that they were moving too fast, only to find out that Wong was buying a necktie for Jung. And this panel tells it all. I like you. Heart? <gasps> My first girlfriend. <laughs> Can you pass this to your brother? <laughs> what? So they go drinking some more, and Wong is carrying Hio home from being very, very drunk. This is when Hio basically confesses his feelings for Wong, only for him to say that he doesn't accept your mind, which is basically means he's too wasted to be making these statements. It's then Hio decides to spill the beans about Jung, and Jung reveals himself to stop him, only to fail as Hio just blurts it out, leaving them staring at each other. Wong asks if he was joking, and runs away when Jung doesn't answer, leaving Hio in the rain to sleep off the alcohol. Don't worry though, Hio ends up in the hospital and is nursed back to health, thanks to someone he knows bringing him there. You'll find out later who it was. So the next day, Jung tries to talk to Wong, only for him to avoid any conversation with him as possible. Feeling crushed, Jung contemplates giving up on Wong as he walks home. He goes to insert his key into the door when Wong appears and embraces him from behind. It's then Wong confesses his feelings to Jung, resulting in probably the BEST KISS CLIMAX EVER! This is where the story takes a very serious tone change, starting with Jung saying he can't do this, and for Wong to go back. Wong spends his time in devastation about what happened, along with Jung getting ridiculously drunk, beating himself over for his actions. Because drinking your problems away has always worked for people in any kind of situation like this. F***ing idiot. Anyway, the bar owner calls up Wong and he arrives to be whomped upon by Jung in classic fashion. Which is cute in my opinion. This is where we learn why Jung rejected Wong by learning about his tragic backstory of his previous boyfriend that died of cancer. This left Jung feeling afraid to love another person because of how he acted during his early time in university with his past boyfriend, resulting in feeling inadequate as a potential partner. So Jung wakes up to find himself back in his bed at his apartment with Wong staring back at him before trying to leave. As he does, he tells Jung how he's a good person and he, that his boyfriend spent his last year alive with him because he saw him as a valuable person. Upon hearing this, Jung stops him and we get one of the most satisfying payoffs for these two characters. Like damn man, this is so good! Hey, that's pretty good! The story starts wrapping up with some memory lane parts where we see that these two have met before and dismiss it on their own contemplation. But I still thought it was pretty funny, both with Wong and Jung. And the story ends with Hyo letting Wong go and starting focusing on his life with someone he's been seeing during this whole time. The same person who helped you at the hospital. The consultant. How this story is structured is something I really like, because it plays very common queer story tropes in the background and have pure raw emotionality to the front. This is great because it shows how we can write stories with these types of characters that showcase their interests and ambitions rather than a struggle of self-acceptance. You clearly understand each character and their motivations through the story that still feels lighthearted, even with the more serious moments of the story. Then having a side character go through the usual arc of questioning their feelings and their sexuality to finding help learn the truth about themselves was nice. Because this is a very common trope that I'm okay with seeing for things like coming of age stories or a struggle with acceptance of the self and overcoming adversity story arcs. However, it goes further with how one makes the next step after coming to terms with themselves by confessing their feelings to the person that made them question themselves in the first place. Way to go, Hio. You did something a lot of people wouldn't have the guts to do. I mean, I have done something like this, but with a note. And it was a girl who rejected me. Then again, I was like 16, so I didn't really have a good idea how to do anything like that anyways. <laughs> uh, life experiences, people. Life experiences. 
<laughs> it's funny because it's true. Okay, the next part I want to talk about are the characters. They are really well written as far as the usual rom-com type, but more fitting to the relationship dynamic. Wong is a super caring, charitable, and outgoing guy that probably fits in the himbo category, but I'll leave that for you to decide. Jung being the straightforward professional who has a weakness for flattery, definitely has a Napoleon complex as it drives his independence, but that doesn't get out of hand. As for Hyo, he was great as a plot catalyst for the main story, but still gets a happy ending as opposed to being the unrequited love into eternal loneliness type of arc, which is great because I'm tired of that old Hayes code trope along with things like barrier gay or just gays can never have a happy ending in general. Okay, let's move on talking about the art. Like I said, if you haven't checked out any of Mocking Moon's more recent art pieces, I suggest you do so because this person makes some of my most favorite pieces. And I would even say that Makamoon sits in the same pedestal as Jiraiya. Not only that, but how well Makamoon uses different colorings for different segments like flashbacks in a similar way that we use different fonts was really helpful in understanding the purpose without halting the flow of the story. Plus, I mean, just look at some of these great wonderful images of love. God, these are so good. Overall, this is one of my favorite manhwa in this genre, and highly recommend it if you're looking for a light story that doesn't demand too much on deep themes or harsh topics. It's a story that shows how people live their lives and how they entwine with each other over a course of a year. Or at least I think it was a year. You double check with that. And that is it for my episode. Hopefully I give you guys enough entertainment and enjoyment to kind of whisk away with some escapism from the real world. Here, let me go ahead and check out the real world for you guys and see how things are turning out. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so, uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. If you guys want to just stick around a little bit more, maybe you guys should check out some of my other videos. They're actually some pretty good ones, and if I don't say so myself, as a shameless shill, uh, I don't know. You're doing great. <laughs> I also want to take this time that I know this video is coming out after Pride Month, but a happy obligatory Pride Month to everybody. Yay, woo. Uh, if you were asking me what I did for this past Pride Month, I just pretty much just stayed home and watched works that either contained queer characters or were made by queer creators. Or watched documentaries about actual queer people because that's the way I'm going to celebrate Pride. I, I'd rather do that than the national commercialism and commodity of selling my identity to me like I'm a product that, you know, the real world for some reason thinks that's how we want to be represented. Whatever. Mm-hmm, I heard that. I wish I didn't hear that, but I just heard that. But yes, if you also want to know, I also did a nice little watch party with my people on Discord, which I highly recommend you guys joining because this is where I can actually interact with you on the times that I have available and actually can do things like a watch party that we did recently on the How to Train Your Dragon series sequels because, funny enough, I never saw the sequels and we just recently found out that the uh, director was a gay guy. And not just any gay guy, but just a big, burly guy. So yeah, that's how I'm going to celebrate Pride from now on, is watching Queer Creators Works. Another thing that I want to point out about my Discord server is that I have a fan art little tab thing. So very recently, some of my members in my Discord server asked if they can make fan art or if they wanted me to have fan art made of myself and it wasn't necessarily the idea I was going behind it. It was more like, hey, I made a fan art of insert whatever franchise that you're making the fan art for. That way people can actually see your fan art because it's fan art. But they want to also take the challenge of making fan art for me. So if you want to make fan art for me, I'm going to showcase it here at the end of the video so people can actually see it. And uh, let's see some of it right now. You know, I like it. 
I'm okay with it. If you're wondering why they made me a fox, it's because I told them that I liked Star Fox as a kid. I, I mean, Star Fox 64 is like one of my favorite games to play because it's just it's always a lot of fun. Plus, I also really like the story. It kind of resonated with me with all that stuff. But yeah, anyways. So, yeah, join me on my Discord if you haven't done so. And if you actually do feel inclined to donate to me monetarily, you can do that at my Ko-Fi. So links will be in the description. But other than that, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I certainly hope I see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.